In this video, we'll introduce the other main way of using calculus for parametric curves, and that's finding areas under them. So if I have the graph of y equals f of x, I know how to find the area between that graph and the x-axis. Right, this is our standard integral of f of x dx, and it comes from, again, taking this curve, breaking it up into little pieces, and adding up all these little rectangles. Taking a limit to get to a Riemann sum to get to an actual integral. What happens if instead of a parametric curve, can I still do the same thing? Let's say we have something like this as well that is now defined parametrically. I want to do the exact same process and see what that looks like. So with this setup, what's the area of one rectangle? Well, the area of one rectangle is, from our normal ALK1 stuff, is the function value times the change in x. But in this case, what's really my function? My function is really the height. It's really the y value. This becomes a y value here at some point t. And what's delta x? Well, for the delta x, we're going to apply the same trick we did for tangent lines. The delta x, I can represent this as an x prime at some c times an appropriate change in t. So I can use these different x values here and figure out what the t values are for them and convert this delta x into a delta t. So this should then be a y prime times an x prime at some c times a delta t. And when I take the limit, this c becomes a t because now everything's squished down as a width of zero. The key point is here, the height of my rectangles is y of t. My width is delta x, which I can rewrite as x prime times delta t. And then in the limit, this goes to a Riemann sum and goes to an integral just like it did before. So the result I get here is then the following. So if the curve c of t, which is just x of t, y of t, is always above the x-axis, and x of t is increasing from t equals a to t equals b, the point here is to make sure I'm always going forward in this problem. If I end up backtracking at all, I get some weird cancellation I want to be careful of when I'm doing this problem. So as long as I only go forward the entire way, then the area between the graph and the x-axis is the integral from a to b of y of t times x prime of t dt. And that's how we can find areas of regions that are bounded by parametric curves. Like in this example, find the area contained inside the loop of the graph c of t is 1 minus t squared t cubed minus 4t. So I want the area that's inside this loop right here. How am I going to find that? Well, I need to find first where this intersection point is and then what I can use to find the area. So let's figure out this point first. Now that point occurs when y equals 0 because I'm on the axis. Let's figure out when y equals 0. So y of t equals 0 means t cubed minus 4t equals 0, which is t times t squared minus 4 is 0. So I get 2, minus 2, and 0 as my three points where this is 0, which makes sense. I should have two of those here and one of those over on the other side when I pass through that point as well. Based on the fact that if I plug 0 into c of t, I get a 1 for the x-coordinate. This here is the t equals 0 1, and over here I have the t equals plus or minus 2 at that point. So to find the area, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to split this in half and just find the top area and then double it for the whole thing because this is a symmetric function. Right? This is even, this is odd. So to find that, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2. Because if I do 0, I'll start over here, and I do 2, I will hit this endpoint here, which will give me exactly one loop of this curve. So let's set up the integral. So the integral should be integral from 0 to 2, y of t, which is t cubed minus 4t, times x prime, which x was 1 minus t squared, so x prime is minus 2t, dt. We can then expand this out and then go to integrate. This will be the integral from 0 to 2 of minus 2t to the fourth plus 8t squared dt. Antiderivative is minus 2 fifths t to the fifth 
plus 8 thirds t cubed from 0 to 2. 0 to 0, I can plug in 2. And I get a 64 over 5 with a minus sign plus a 64 over 3, which gives me a 128 over 15, which then is half of my area because that was one of the loops. I get the second loop, I double this. So the actual area is 256 over 15. And notice in this case, my x was actually always decreasing on my domain. And that worked out fine as well. The issue is I don't want to double back. So as long as x is either always increasing or always decreasing, this will work to give me the area under this curve. So the point here is we can do pretty much anything we want to do with calculus for these parametric curves. Well, we can find areas, we can find tangent lines, we can find all the things we could before. Now for these parametric curves as well, which gives a lot more flexibility for things we could draw, things we can analyze. This graph here would be really hard to draw with y as a function of x. It'd be impossible, but even each little branch would be hard to do. With these parametric curves, we can now analyze these sorts of graphs, analyze these sorts of regions that we had no way of handling before and figure out the area, figure out the tangent, figure out all these things we want about them using these idea of parametric equations, the parametric curves.